Oh, hey, Kim. Oh, you look so gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Oh, Eric, just, uh, Eric here, he says, hi, Mom. And he hi, said, sweetie. You're a pretty yes. gorgeous yourself, too. That's what he says. So. What now? Eric says, you look gorgeous yourself. Oh, thank you. All right, so um, we were going to think about talking about the flow of money, which we will do at one point or another. But uh, Eric has decided, along with Kim, that we've got another topic that seems more timely. So take the floor, Eric. Yeah, so um, Eric was, well, as you were saying, we were going to talk about money. But then Eric, I was chatting with him yesterday, and he said, you know, I think the mental health topic you guys were talking about might be more appropriate at this time. Yeah. Um, I'm j I was chatting with them. I'm just having client after client after client who has, you know, like depression problems and that kind of thing. And they just, they're at the point where they will not go in and get traditional medical help. Mm -hmm. Why um, lack of trust, and then as I chatted with Eric, got more insight into it, and this has been going on for a while. Here's what he's saying. Um, traditionally, when someone comes in for mental health care and they come in for counseling, um, he says the first steps are important because they're helping them. Some people come for counseling and they don't even realize maybe that they've been abused because it's just so normal to them. So getting him to see what's happened and see where the pattern is and all that. But he says, then once that happens, traditionally what they do, then they give them coping skills, which is a good thing. But he said the missing pieces are the forgiveness and taking back the power and those kinds of things. So what he's saying is in the traditional therapies, um, they keep coming back and he, sh he keeps talking about a broken record. He says, it's just like a broken record where they talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. And for some of those people, they just keep getting re-traumatized by it and they never move out of it. So they're leery to. And then the other thing is, um, you know, medications are used and so many people do, the ones that don't want to go down that road are opposed to using medications. Yeah. And so what Eric, what Eric was saying was that um, in the future, what this is going to look like, and then he, he talks about two different setups, but okay, so in the future, what this is going to look like, um, he says they're going to have to start looking at things more holistically. Yeah. He sure. showed me like a, like a clinic setting or a spa kind of setting where you have naturopathic doctors you know, regular doctors, chiropractors, acupuncturists, people who do cranial sacrum, myofascial release, uh, sound therapy, all these different things. And Rife, Rife and scale energy machines too. Yeah, yeah. He said that would be excellent too. Because what he says is that we have to start treating the whole person. Yeah. Because he's saying quite often what can be going on with depression and anxiety is nutritional deficiency. Oh yeah. You know, so it has to be test that has, there has to be, you know, some testing for that and getting that back on track. He said, that's one thing. He said, the other thing people are forgetting about and it's becoming especially prevalent right now is, um, uh, we need physical activity in our lives. And now, you know, since we had this shutdown, and gyms were closed and all that, people are much less physically active. And so what he said is that it really needs to be combined because the memories, both this life trauma, flat, past life traumas, they live in our bones and our muscles. Yes, and it's so, on a cellular level, right? And it could, it could change your DNA in your cells, correct? It can. It can. And so he says, the longer you stay in that stagnated place, the more the symptoms kind of start to build on and on and on and on. Um, yeah, and if you're inside, especially now we have a lot of windows that don't allow the proper wavelengths of sunlight in. So our vitamin D levels go down and that can wreak havoc on the immune system, but also, um, you know, can predisposed us to cancer, but also depression. Mm -hmm. and that was the other thing Eric mentioned, the sunshine. Mm -hmm. And um, 
then he started talking about um, what he's telling me now. Um, the sunscreens we use. Mm -hmm. mm. That in actuality, we need some sun, you know, and that too much sunscreen is blocking those rays from, from coming to us. So that, that's not always a good thing, those real high levels. And then he talks about, too, the pineal gland and yeah. um, glasses that are darkening and stuff can sometimes mess with the pineal gland function. Oh, the transitional lenses? Yeah, yeah. They're, I guess they're better now, but back, well, I know when I was probably a teenager, they came out with those. Yeah, and, uh, I remember too, yeah. Yeah, they, I guess they wrecked pineal glands. So he's talking about all of those things and that... Um, he's saying for, you know, for people that are just stuck and just stagnant and don't want to go through traditional medical care, um, he's just saying, you know, um, if you can, as he advised on the radio the other day, get yourself into doing acupuncture or chiropractic treatments or massage therapy or any of those things that will start moving the stagnated energy around. And, um, well, go ahead. How does the transition the lenses? How, how does that wreck the uh, pineal gland? And do the current new ones do the same thing, Gary? The new ones are better um, because he says it prevents your body's. Um, it did did something to do with. It's got something to do with the light coming in through your eyes and influence your influencing your pineal gland and for some reason that cut it off yeah there's something about light in the pineal gland well, what about sunglasses well he okay so what he says is um you get more benefit if you don't use them okay. but they're not as harmful as the ones that are like the transitional because what he's saying is that those are on you 24 seven. I mean, they're on your face all day. Sunglasses you're taking on. Okay. Taking out, putting on. So you're getting a break. And he said it's got to do with, it start, also starts to affect your, um, the pupil's ability to dilate and let in light. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're, they're not dark when you're in a lit room though, uh, but they still have some sort of filter that affects the pineal gland, even when they're not in the dark phase is that what you're saying or, or not he's saying that's not so bad it's um it's the fact of um having so much time where your body's own natural ability to shut out light and bring in light is affected that it um he's kind of saying it like this like like if you didn't exercise and use your muscles they would act okay oh yeah Right. You know, so so it's like, what is he saying? It's like these glasses. I keep getting this opening and shutting. I don't know what he's saying. Accommodated light. Yeah. Uh, have to be able to accommodate to light. Mm -hmm. um, and if, yeah, okay. Yeah, and so he says when you, anything, if you um, take away the body's natural ability to function, eventually it starts atrophying and doesn't work as efficient. All right. So that's what he's been talking about. Um, then I asked him, okay, so people who don't want to go on medicines, what can they do? And so he's telling me, um, okay, the nutrition he's saying first, but he's also saying, um, Uh-oh, you're frozen. You're frozen. Uh-oh. Did it freeze? I'm frozen. Okay. Is, am I still froze? No, no, we're good. Okay. Um, if they, if, 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 uh, nutrition, if they mm -hmm. can't, take, can't take medicine. And then he said um, herbs, there are herbs that are called, um, the class of them are adaptogens. Okay. Help your body to um, regulate stress. Oh. Um, I don't know their specific names. I know um, there's one ash, 
ashwagandha, or oh, something yeah. like that. Ashwagandha or something like that. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maca is another one. He says there's several of them. Those help. Do you take them as a tea? You can take it as a tea. Okay. Um, the other thing, okay, so he's talking about almost like two phases because what he's saying is in these years coming up and and this is going to be at least a couple decades he tells me there's going to be this transition period where people are like learning um like being reprogrammed to how to uh, work with spirit mind body spirit kind of things it's like a total reprogramming that they have to do and to get people to learn how to see the bigger picture so he says in the beginning we're going to have to have this kind of help and he says they will um, develop medications that are effective and um, maybe not so many side effects that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and so he says they will be used but he says it's got to be in the short term because what he told me is right now what happens if somebody gets put on an antidepressant and quite often that's it, they're on it for the rest of their life. And mm -hmm. then when they try to get off it, they just, they can't because of uh, uh, yeah, so continuation syndrome is terrible. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So he, he talked about that, but then he says then eventually when, um, as the planet continues to ascend, um, we're not going to need that because the vibration on the planet's going to be so high okay. that people aren't, the energy of vibration, just the energy of, and vibration of depression is just, it won't last on this planet. It won't be held. So good. When is that going to happen? You say two decades? He says two to four. Okay, so yeah. um, when did y'all have this powwow? Are you, um, yesterday. You take notes as he talks and stuff? Hmm, say that again? Uh, you, you, uh, so uh, yesterday, today? Yesterday, because I sat down. I like to make bullet points before we talk because yeah. I I can go down the rabbit hole. Well, you'll never take it. <laughs> yeah, and I can get very lost in what we're talking about. You know, go off on another subject. So I started writing down my bullet points and I just wasn't getting it. And then he says, switch it to this. It's much, it's more needed at this time. Okay. So that was, that was what he said. Um, he says that um, the other thing that's going on right now, prior to this, let's see, how is he saying it? Prior to this, we had, um, people had the ability to look into their future, you know, a couple months ahead of time and know they'd still be at the same job or still be doing this or doing that or taking a vacation or we'd have things to look forward to. Yeah. The way things currently are, yeah. nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. And so he says it used to be like people would look to the future for the light at the end of the tunnel or the pot of gold. And he says, they can't do it anymore. So it's creating us uh, feelings of hopelessness in people yeah. because they just don't know what's going to happen next. And with the lockdown, a lot of people uh, just don't have the face to face with their friends and, and family members as much as they did anymore. That's true. He's saying that's very, that's also detrimental. The other thing he was talking to me about the social distancing and wear gloves and wear masks and all that, that humans need touch. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are actually people that, um, like like babies, they'll have a failure to thrive if they're not touched yeah. and cuddled in that. Absolutely. It's a really necessary thing. It's an energetic exchange. And so all of this distancing is producing um, a lot of isolated feelings. Yeah. So his biggest thing he, he told me to tell everybody is just to keep in mind that this, what we're doing right now, this is a temporary reality. Yeah. It's the third dimension playing out. It's not gonna last forever. Um, 
And I, so I say, okay, what do we do about it, Eric? Um, and he talks about, you know, staying in the now as much as we can, realizing, okay, in this moment I'm safe, in this moment I have food, I have a house, I have this, and don't look into my future. Because here's what he said, the future doesn't exist, basically. Right. We create it. Yes. And so to sit there and think about and worry about what's going to happen in the future because of what's happened in the past, you just put that into the future and create it. Mm -hmm. So he talks it's about just staying in the now, being calm, deep breathing, meditating, all the other things I ever said. And just, um, he said, we just have to be strong, be there for each other. Um, he also suggested um, community. Um, like, um, you know, how, how a lot of people gather in church services and that on Sundays, that's their community gathering. Mm -hmm. That took a lot away from people. Mm -hmm. Um, but he, he, he said that that's a good thing. So people don't be, aren't isolated. But the other point he made with that is like people who aren't wanting to do traditional medical care and that kind of thing they're probably not the kind of people that are going to be going to the church and that kind of thing. Yeah. Is that kind of an old way of spiritual understanding? So most of them probably are not going to go, but he, what he told me to uh, bring up is there are a lot of, um, you would consider them maybe new thought kind of churches where they oh, keep that God is within that kind of thing. Yeah. And that would be especially beneficial for, mm -hmm. for people. Yeah, they need us as a community. I agree. Now, <clears throat> what about people who don't? Oh, one thing I want to bring up about scalar energy, this uh, Tom uh, Paladino at uh, scalarlight.com. His scalar machines, if you give him a picture, read your biofield, it will actually uh, give you, send you nutrients. It doesn't send it through the airways, but what it does is it takes uh, elements in your body, like carbon, calcium, um, phosphate, nitrogen, and, and build the nutrients that you're lacking. I think it's pretty cool. Just from uh, it's like making a dinner, try to make a dinner out of all the leftovers in your, in your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. All right, so what, oh, go ahead. go ahead. Oh, he said, yeah, that would be especially effective. And then when you said the bio thing, he told me, don't forget about biofeedback. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, that'll be, he's saying that's going to be a part of the mental health uh, therapy kind of thing too, where they're doing biofeedback and seeing how certain thoughts produce certain reactions in their body to help them reprogram so they can see what's going on. So what about people who don't have enough money for, um, for this, any kind of holistic type of therapy for the depression? Because a lot of people are depressed also because they don't have enough money. I know. Oh, strafe. Strafe. Well, okay. So, um, in the interim, right now, I'm not. Let me ask him about about that. But what he told me yesterday was that, because I said that exact same thing to him yesterday. I said, "So we have these centers. That's all great, but I know how much that kind of stuff costs. So only people, only the elite or people who have money get to go to these." And he said. Oh, no, 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 no. There's not going to be any of that. He said, he didn't give me too much detail, but he said, wait and watch what happens. But he said, there is funding available for humanitarian causes, stuff like that. And um, that there would be no reason. You would be funded. Whoever does this, you'd be funded. There would be no reason to charge people money to come in. Wait, isn't but, there some, something where that's coming up supposedly where all debt is going to be forgiven income tax is going to be what is that called there's going to be no income tax um okay can't, can't remember but it's a list of, of things yeah he, he said that's it that's what he's okay, talking that's about. what is that called? um it's some plan some big plan or something like that Nas oh, yeah nasara that's right or something like that yeah both lines yeah. So yeah, so he said that there would be none of that, but he said, but then here's the thing you got to realize though, um, for some people who, when they don't put anything into a project or anything, 
they don't take any value in it. And so then sometimes they don't show up at their appointments or they just um, sometimes would take advantage. Mm -hmm. So he said it would be kind of a thing where anybody could come, but you have to agree to be responsible to do your part of your therapy. Right. You know? And maybe give back in another way. Maybe there's something that they can help tend to the garden of the center. Or, well, you know, some, some equal energy exchange is probably pretty important. Right, 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 right. All right. So he's saying, he's saying just hold on. Things are going to be okay. Um, but he's just saying it, the energy on the planet is very, very heavy right now. What are the other things you told me? I made my notes. Oh, um, the other things you said that would help were things like Reiki and rolfing. What is rolfing? Rolfing? Oh gosh, they go, it looks like, um, looks like they're eating bread with your muscles. They oh, go, okay, so it's body work. Birds. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it shifts your meridians and stuff like that, I guess? Releases all the, um, the, adhesions and the knots in the muscles and the fascia restriction it just kind of yeah. it and, it all up. and i know people who are doing it will they'll just start crying for no reason and not yeah. crying because you're releasing some trauma from them yeah. yeah um other thing you talked about um sports exercise dance very 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 effective music maybe yeah yeah um and he told me to, the other thing he said is, um, a lot, we have a lot of people who are just so depressed and so low right now, and they're not even telling us. They're just yeah. trying to get through the day and put on a happy face. But he said um, to start really watching for these subtle signs, and if we can catch things earlier, it would be a benefit. Yeah. He tells me when you see the sparkle going out of someone's eye, that's yeah. what you know. So what do you do? How do you approach them? Well, that, that's the hard part. That's what I'm trying to talk to him about. What if the person doesn't want care or doesn't anything? And the suggestion he gave me the other day um, was to, um, and this is with a specific client who was asking, um, just until the person was calm and say, you know, there are things that can help you with this. I can't, it's hard to see you going through this sadness and this depression or this rage. I know you don't maybe want traditional medicine or counseling, but would you consider trying acupuncture or um, go to a naturopathic doctor that can help you with some herbal remedies? Because yeah. He's saying you got to wait till the person's calm and just keep offering them different alternatives. Yeah. Um, and he's saying more than anything, get them out and get them exercising, get them moving. Yeah. Hey, hey, you want to go on a walk together? And then maybe they'll calm. Maybe, let's go to the hike in the park. You know, maybe that's the moment where, where they will achieve some sort of state mm -hmm. of peace and calm. And then you can... Just even if you say, hey, I'm here for you, it looks like you're struggling. Right, exactly. After that. Um, all right, so what's going on? And why is this, the energy so heavy now? Why all this chaos is happening with the pandemic, with the riots? It's, it's, what's going on? Why now? Well, okay, so, um, and we, we've talked about, about it before too, we're in the middle of, you could call it a spiritual battle or war. Yeah. Or is that wannabe that used to be, um, know that the, the service to others, the lighter end has won, has more energy and is in the ethers, it's one. So they're creating all of this chaos. And what Eric is saying, basically they're trying to do what they're, in addition to trying to prevent this from happening, is they're trying to keep the people's vibration on the planet so low that we can ascend. And they're doing it by keeping them in fear and keeping them in uncertainty and keeping them in poverty. 
and all those things so that it provokes a reaction. Yeah, so for example, um, I think the CDC or NIH, whatever, those apocalyptic models for the pandemic scared people so much and it kind of forced our leaders, governors, et cetera, into making a lockdown that was way too severe when they really should have just quarantined people 60 and over. That would have been the only thing they would have had to do. And, and I think that was on purpose. They wanted the chaos. They wanted the economy to tank. They want people to be depressed and have a low vibration. Same thing with the, with the, uh, the, the riots. So, you know, so many of them are paid by the darker forces you know, because they want the chaos, they want the death, they want the destruction of businesses, et cetera. Why would that help them? Why would all that help them? Keep them in power or, or to get people, the light workers out of power? Yeah, okay, so we're trying to get everybody to, now we're trying, that's the wrong word, we are moving into the time where everybody realizes that they are a sovereign being that the, they have their own light within them, which is the light of source or the light of God, whatever you want. These people that had been in power and control, they want us to look at them as our authority figures, our leaders. We all know there's been like some not so good stuff that's happened with churches as well, you know, and so they're in there too with that power and authority. They yeah. want us. They want us to, how, how's Eric putting it? They want us to seek sort, think we have to seek to connect to source through another. Oh. So that we can't do it on our own. So that's what they're trying to hide. Well, that's why in the Council of, of Nicaea, that somebody, whatever, some, I can't remember who, uh, Constantinople, whatever, took out the, the, the you know, mediumship channeling from the Bible and mm -hmm. also reincarnation out of the Old Testament and I mean yeah. the New yeah. Testament. they didn't want people to know they wanted to keep them in fear that if this was their only life they better follow these rules and yeah I know oh know. yeah uh, instead of I if I F up I just, whatever next time yeah do that but I mean, you know I think it all started with agriculture when we stopped being hunter-gatherers and nomads agriculture was created and so you had the masses tilling and creating crops uh, that was for the global elite and then money 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 also created this whole hierarchy of the global elite and just us peons i'm not part of that well, I'm you're not global elite. Me in on something else here he said if you took a look at like like look at the um I don't know what you call it in Texas, but we call it the welfare system here where yeah, yeah. You know, people who can't work or whatever, sometimes single mothers with lots of kids. Yeah. Get welfare in there. There's a very small paycheck, not it's not a paycheck, amount of money they get, they get food stamps, medical care, but it keeps them locked in poverty. Yeah. And they're it's a, it's a by design. design. Because I used to hear this all the time when I was working. Um, somebody would come in, they'd get a new job offer that was maybe $2 more an hour, which would really help them. But because if they take that job, they're going to lose their um, their health insurance, which is reasonable now. They're not going to be able to afford it. They can't do it. So they're locked in poverty. Okay. And I know people, I know people like that too. And it's really sad. I think the great society of LBJ, you know, in part, created a whole professional poor class. I mean, yeah, all yeah. Races. and it's, a, it's just another form of slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, money sucks. Okay, so how do we get people out? I mean, how do we? Well, Eric is just saying these are all things. Right now, we got to get all the um, chaos done, move through all this, and then these systems will be put into place where... Okay. Because he says right now, um, say if you wanted to look at a single mom with kids who's on welfare, it doesn't even make any sense for her to go work because she's going to have less money than she has right now. You know, they have to do things 
maybe job training, educating. Um, they already do here. They do where they subsidize daycare. People can get help with daycare because that's the other thing. Daycare is ridiculously expensive. That's awful, but they have to be paid too. These daycare people oh. don't make that much money. Mm -hmm. But uh, there had to be some uh, co-op where p maybe people on welfare who are, who are seeking a job, they take turns taking care of just a group of, of kids in these. Right. I don't know. We'll figure out something. We'll figure out something. I know when my kids were small, and I mean, I made a fairly good wage, but I worked opposite shifts of their father just because it would cost so much to put them in daycare that actually i don't think i would have made anything i think i would have come out um, that's, how, that's, yeah, that's how my one of my daughters and her husband are dealing with i mean they have three kids and they couldn't possibly afford to i mean it would be they're working to pay for daycare so and that's depressing i mean that is just i don't know there's so many things that need to change what is spiritual depression where it, Eric's saying it's basically the same thing where um, you've just, you've reached that level and he's saying where it's like where somebody feels like um, spirit or God is turned on them, is not helping them and just completely kind of shuts the door on that. And so how does that affect our DNA on a cellular level? Well, we need um, that spirit, that force, that, that's our life force. We need that. And so when we turn that off and diminish it, Eric's using the muscle atrophy thing again. Okay. And that, that thing. When, when your system's not flushed with the light it needs, um, the DNA starts activating and shutting down. Wow. What do you say? Okay, so... Um, deactivating, not activating. Yeah, okay. So um, is it sometimes because they are kind of off their, their life purpose or their spiritual mission? They kind of lost the path? And, and I think the shutdown, all this happening, has probably thrown a lot of people off their path. Yeah. He, he says they just moved so far away from it, they can no longer see it or recognize it anymore. He said a lot of times when that's happening, though, the person that it's happening to thinks that source or God or whatever their whatever they pray to, whatever their higher power is, higher understanding is, they feel like they were abandoned by source. Mm -hmm. And Eric is saying nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah. You moved away. The person moved away and, and you know shut the door on it. So they're just not hearing or seeing or however they get their information normally. Well, I mean if if they ask for Eric's help would you be able to help these people, Eric? He says, yes, he can. When, when they're, um, the person, here's what he says, the person asking for the help, though, really has to want it and really has to be willing to do what it takes to help themselves. He says, so many people ask for help, but their ask for help is like, fix me. I don't want to do anything. Oh, I just yeah, right. Well, that's because they're so depressed. It's hard to having yeah. motivation to to do you know he said they just can't see the light at the end of the tunnel yeah. and he's telling me to bring this up too um one of my um people i used to work with in one of my nursing jobs works at a birthing center now which is right in the heart of the city where we've been having all these riots mm -hmm. yeah you're in minneapolis just mm -hmm. fyi people Right. She said that the nights that the riots were going on, that the babies were inconsolable. Oh, wow. <gasps> they picked up the energy. Energy of the stress. So Eric, Eric's just telling me this because I, I can feel it too. It's just, it's tangible. It's in the air. The other thing we've noticed too, a lot of souls that have transitioned, um, people who help them cross over, they we've had a lot more of them showing up because they're telling us that the energy is so thick they can't even see the tunnel sometimes oh wow yeah so it's really uh, eric just showing me like this gray heavy layer over the planet but he's just saying we gotta we gotta stick with it we gotta do our work we gotta be strong and we just gotta keep praying and do whatever we can to keep our vibration high. okay well let's let's talk about 
hope. I mean, you know, I have a feeling that all this crap is going on. It's like taking a, um, you know, a, a, a glass of water that has a bunch of mud. It's just being swirled and the mud is just floating around. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like the necessary evil in order to get rid of the mud um, eventually. So mm -hmm. that, that we have to go through this darkness to get rid of the darkness. Or, I don't know, you tell yeah. me. He's, he's saying it all had to come to light so we could see it, heal it, and um, take different steps, different actions, make it better. Yeah. But too, I was one of them myself. If somebody would have told me that people stole children for what we hear they're stolen for, I would have said, that's not possible because most of us are good, kind people would never even, that's beyond our imagination. Yeah. So we people are like that. Exactly. And so he's saying too many people, um, well, he's not saying too many, a lot of people, he says, for a very long time have just been completely unable to look at the situation and see what's really going on. Mm -hmm. And now they're being forced to, and um, some of the stuff you hear about, it's like, look at the image of, you know, um, George Floyd. Yeah. How many times have we seen that? And every time we see it, we're re-traumatized. Yeah, well, you know, they say sunlight is the best disinfectant, you know, putting sunlight, it, you know, showing what these evil forces are up to so we can. So we can, yeah, we can finally start to take action. Um, so, yeah, so I'm asking Eric right now, what do we do when we're so traumatized like that? And he's telling me people, everybody's got to do what they need to do for themselves. He says, you can't bury your head in the sand and pretend like these things aren't happening. But he, um, like he, for me personally, he, he said, Quit watching the news for a while. Really? Oh, I can't. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I totally yeah. agree. Also, maybe ser be of service. Sometimes the best way out of depression is to serve humanity. And even if it's just some small way, like uh, make dinner for an elderly person, a neighbor, or it's just little things. It, it can just be to smile when you're at people, uh, when you're at the grocery store, or you know, just, or it could be on, on larger levels, of course. Mm -hmm. Eric says that's very good. That gets the energy flowing. But he made it a point um, also, what's he saying? Um, the only thing he says is what some people will do is, um, that's a good way to get the energy flowing. But he says what some people will do, they're maybe depressed or anxious or have something going on themselves. So they think, well, I'll go over here and do this and help this person and just distract myself from it. Well, so yeah. they inject their, themselves into other people's problems or issues yeah. so they don't have to look at their own. And he said, that, that's denial. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to do that because it is eventually going to come out tenfold. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Any last remarks or advice, Eric, before we close? I don't have any other questions on my little list. Um, He's, he is talking about music and vibration. Um, having, he's talking about like soft, elevating class. He's talking about classical music. Oh, okay, okay. Playing classical music in the background. Okay. Something, ha something happened. It was, I believe, if I'm getting the story right, it was around, you know, this was something that, that they did in Nazi Germany. They did something with the frequency and the music and they turned it down um, because there's a certain um, frequency that's a chaos code or a chaos level. So all music is produced at that chaos level right now. Okay. So he says some, for some people when they're listening to that music, that induces more chaos, more anxiety, more depression. He said, if you go to classical music and music that was way older than, you know, before the, what was it, the 1940s? Yeah. That, that music has got the higher vibration and that will not bring um, your vibration and your mood down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Well, thank you, guys. I love you, Eric. I love you, Kim. You guys get in touch with her at embody-light.com, which I will put right here. Thank you, Kim. You're welcome. You're Bye, yeah. sweetie. Come to Galveston with us. Okay, I will, he says. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Have a good day. Oh.